Hi everybody and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today I am going to do another uh, requested topic by a member of my secret Facebook group that you should definitely join. Um, And somebody asked if there are times when it is smart to take a break from intimacy because things aren't going well or basically for any other reason that um, it would be better to take a pause versus to continue doing something that maybe isn't really working or isn't making um, the couple feel connected or at least one partner. So it's an interesting question and obviously I work with a lot of people in um, sexless marriages and marriages where there were lots of breaks taken, uh, too many. Uh, so, So it's interesting to think about if there are positive reasons for a break. And uh, before I do that, I, of course, want to tell you to subscribe because my next one will probably be subscriber only. That will probably be one of my couples you meet in counseling. The Ice Queen and the Martyr, I think, is next. And that's super interesting for people who um, are in relationships where they feel that their wife is cold or avoidant and they're trying to do everything to meet their their wife's needs. And why does that not turn out well? Um, But for now, let's go back to the topic at hand. So are there ever reasons to take a break from sex? So yeah, I mean, obviously there are biological ones. Certainly if somebody is ill, if somebody's just given birth, if um, somebody is grieving, if somebody just overall is like really not in a good place, you know, then they may not be comfortable with intimacy right then. And as a partner and a human being, you obviously would not want to push it when somebody's going through some bad shit, you know? Um, also, I mean, nursing, a woman's sex drive tanks and goes, basically her body goes into menopause, which I've mentioned before uh, in my podcast on reasons why women's libido can be low. Um, in terms of the couple itself, it's interesting, you know, so we can discuss like why you would want to take a break because the couple isn't doing well. So when the couple is not feeling close, so usually what that means is the woman or the lower libido partner does not feel emotionally connected to the higher libido partner. And so that person, I'm just going to say the woman, because it's more frequently the woman, wants to take a break from intimacy until she feels closer. So unfortunately, what can happen with this, as anybody knows who's listening and can predict it, is that then the man can't feel close because they're not having sex. So it's like, that's his love language hers is emotional connection so it's uh you know it's cutting off your nose to spite your face and this usually doesn't end well plus people can kind of really get out of the rhythm of ever having sex when they stop within monogamy this is how a lot of sexless marriages happen is there's some sort of hiatus and then people never come back so i would really usually not recommend for um like, like, it's not going to bring you closer. Let's put it that way. If the person really cannot bring themselves to have sex anymore, then couples counseling needs to start right away because it's very dangerous really for the marriage, not for for one person's needs to go completely unmet. Obviously, it's um, also bad for both people's needs to go unmet, which is the situation that would be happening then. So it's twice as bad. So this puts the marriage in a very dangerous, precarious position where now instead of one person feeling like their needs aren't getting met, both are. And now let me just clear up some mythology. If a woman doesn't feel emotionally connected, there's like no way that she's having good sex with the guy anyway. (laughs) I mean, let's be real. So like if you're a woman who's like, yeah, I'm still like meeting all of his needs, even though I am so completely dissatisfied and miserable in this relationship constantly about the lack of uh, emotional uh, affection. No, you're not. You're basic. I mean, it, unless you are like a unicorn, but most women in that situation are having extremely unenthusiastic, basically dead sex um, just to almost um, like check a box and the guy knows it. So he's not really getting any needs met. So the real reframe of this is like, are you going to take away even the like 
like kind of the the barest outline of the minimum of what the man's needs are in order to punish him for not meeting your needs in other ways is usually not good. Like that usually doesn't work well. Now, if you really, again, cannot bring yourself to have sex with your spouse, then you should be in couples counseling like right away. Or if you know in your own head that it's the beginning of the end for you, then you should be in individual counseling too to figure that out. So if you're a woman and you've like said that you're on break from having sex with your husband, but you can really genuinely never think of having sex with him again, and you kind of know that, then you should be figuring out next steps so that you guys don't have to be together anymore. You know, not just like endlessly having a sex hiatus, which is going to turn into like months and years. So that isn't good for anybody. So in a case also where the lower libido partner, a woman does not feel that her emotional needs are being met, then she's got to talk about it and she's got to say that before it's bad enough for like a sex break. You know, like if if you feel that, like how have you been feeling then for the previous weeks, months, etc. Like we need to get you into counseling before before it comes to something that is so bad that you feel like a sex moratorium is in order to right the ship because it's not going to right the ship. It's going to make things worse. But um, we, we ideally would want the couple to be in counseling before, way, way, way before that happens. So um, I have heard though about like other like reasons that people have sex breaks and like one of them was uh, – Somebody told me uh, years ago that um, they weren't having sex with a partner because they they both didn't feel good about their bodies right then. And that was like a mutually agreed upon hiatus. I mean, if people want to do that, like if both people agreed to take a hiatus from sex for some reason, well, sure. I mean, anything that that's both people agree on is fine. I, I don't see how that makes people feel better about their bodies. But I mean, I guess if people are really, really into what they look like, and they feel that they're in some big initiative to get fit, and they want to reward themselves eventually with having sex, I mean, that could be cool. That was like the only time I ever heard that. But um, maybe there's other people doing that. If there's ever like a mutually agreed upon reason for a hiatus, like some people don't have sex like before their wedding, even though they were having sex before, you know, for for like a month or something so that they it could be special sure like there could be reasons that people agree to do this I've just not you know obviously my occupation is a couples counselor so I'm not seeing people who are like super happy bounding in saying yay we have a sex hiatus and it worked for us I'm seeing people that are like we have a sex hiatus and that turned into a sex drought and we haven't had sex in two years so that kind of thing usually um, predicts the end of a relationship rather than some sort of renaissance afterwards um However, are there times where um, a sex hiatus certainly might be very good? Yeah, like in terms of the emotional uh, piece of it, there the specific situation I'm thinking about is if there's betrayal. So if there has been betrayal, then usually the partner who has been betrayed does not want to have sex with the other partner because they feel completely betrayed and lied to. And then they would feel that they're being dishonest with themselves and like, um, you know, disingenuous if they have sex with the betraying partner. Uh, so that makes sense that you wouldn't want to open up sexually to somebody who has done something to hurt you. And of course, course in an abusive situation not only should you be on a sex hiatus but you should get out of the relationship but we're talking about here um, a betrayal where you're thinking that you're going to stay together then couples counseling can be very useful to get you back on track but I've often seen a sex hiatus then especially right after you discover the infidelity because then you feel totally blindsided and in a PTSD like trauma state and so your body just doesn't work the same sometimes people have like what we call his hysterical bonding after that where they get like super upset and they want to keep the cheating partner so they have sex with them but at some point down the line there's usually a hiatus even if that period happens so that would be kind of a, a normative sort of thing now again it's normal like not to want to have sex with somebody who you don't feel close to but that doesn't mean that you should just take a hiatus that means that the couple should be in counseling to try to deal with that because there's going to be no 
uh, emotionally distant partner that acts emotionally closer when they're cut off from sex. That's just never going to happen. And if they do bullshit you that they feel closer because they're getting desperate and they want to have sex, that's not the kind of thing you want. Like, you know, you don't want somebody to feel like, "Uh uh-oh, I better like act close because otherwise she's cutting me off from sex because you know, that's bad. Like then the partner feels manipulated. So then they're being manipulative in return. Then that's like a situation where nobody's being their best and most genuine self. So like to summarize on this topic, if you feel like taking a hiatus from intimacy would somehow repair your marriage, you really have to have a deep, open and honest talk about that with your partner. Because in most cases, the partner will not agree with that, (laughs) to put it mildly. And um, I've never actually seen that go well, in fact, I've written a lot about that the emotional piece and the sexual piece need to be discussed and worked on at the same time in couples counseling because interestingly, now that I'm talking, um, I realize that a lot of traditional couples counseling um, actually um, embraces this model and that's why it doesn't really work very well, such that, I mean, I'll explain, such that uh, the the therapist is under the impression that if the emotional portion of the relationship is somehow healed or resolved, sex will recur spontaneously, and it doesn't. You know, and that's uh, like I see so many clients who've been in couples counseling for years and they've never talked about sex and endlessly they're trying to uh, resolve emotional or communication I- issues or breakdowns. And the sex piece never gets worked on. And they get further and further away from ever having had sex. So then the lower libido partner is very anxious about the recurrence of sex and the resumption of sex. And I believe frequently subconsciously then, um, you know, stays in counseling endlessly working on emotional stuff. Because at least then there's some sort of uh, approved reason that they're not having sex. Because the emotional stuff has not been fully worked out. Is it ever though? I mean, is there ever a relationship, a marriage where all emotional issues are just completely worked out and everybody's dancing around in a meadow with unicorns? I don't think so. So if any time there's an emotional issue or a disconnect, sex is to be removed, then that's actually removing the uh, love language and the language of fulfillment and closeness of at least one of the partners from the equation. And that doesn't work. It would be like as though if you... um, if your husband said that you weren't having enough sex with him, so therefore he wasn't going to be nice to you. So that isn't, that is what it is, you know, like that's just like the the shadow of, of that. So even if you're saying, no, no, it's not that I'm punishing, it's just that I genuinely don't feel connected. I mean, people genuinely have to do shit they don't want to do within marriage, and this should not be controversial. And one of them would be either uh, try to fulfill a partner's love language or make an active, proactive, real effort to resolve issues, uh, you know, in a very intense sort of way, if you are feeling like you have to cut somebody off from their primary mode of closeness. So like, instead of saying, we're just not going to have sex until I feel closer, you would say, I have booked us with a couples counselor, you know, because we need to resolve this marriage stat, you know, we need to work on things because I don't want to have no sex life. I know that that's really important, at least to you, since I don't feel like it now, that's a bad sign for the future of our marriage. And I'm hoping that there are some ways that, that we can work to reconnect because I'm, I'm, I'm understanding this is an urgent problem. Basically, the hiatus is happening, but I am taking it as a very urgent canary in the coal mine about the future of our relationship. So in that case, you know, yeah, I mean, that that could be the only way that I would say a hiatus would be really uh, useful in any way is if it is thought to be a major, major warning signal that things are wrong in the marriage and the immediate precipitator of embarkment, embarkment, embankment, what am I thinking of, <laughs> embarking on a round of uh, couples counseling. And if you do go to couples counseling, there's been any sexual issue, you must get a couples counselor who is familiar with and comfortable with talking about sexual issues and prioritizing sexual issues in addition to other sorts of issues. Because otherwise, people end up throwing good money after bad in these endless cycles of couples counseling where the sex life is never even discussed. 
And it's certainly not treated as an issue to be tackled alongside other issues. And if you are in such couples counseling, then, you know, really talk to your high libido partner about it. Because if they're going to be honest with you, they're going to be like, this is horrible. You know, every week I show up, I feel like maybe I'm going to do better. I'm going to somehow um, have made you happy. I don't. And also, we never have sex and we're never talking about it. So really, I mean, take this. If you are in couples counseling, then take this time to tell your partner ask your partner genuinely how they feel about it and if it is addressing all of the problems that they have which may include sex you know or the lack thereof so and that's by the way why a lot of men don't like to come into therapy uh, particularly couples counseling because it's very historically traditionally has been very focused on verbal expressions of emotion and communication and that's that is more toward what women are trained in and are really comfortable with versus more proactive goal oriented um, styles that also include sex as a priority, which is what men would be more comfortable with. All right, so hopefully you found this to be useful about the idea of sexual hiatuses or breaks and what I think that um, they do and do not accomplish and where uh, they might fit into the trajectory of a marriage given various things that might transpire. And uh, please do subscribe because whatever I record next is going to be subscriber only, probably going to be the couples counseling one that I told you about before, couples you meet in counseling. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.